Chairwoman Spanberger, Ranking Member Lam Alpha, and members of the subcommittee, thank you for the opportunity to appear here today to share the story of the farmers we serve and the investments in soil health. We applaud the subcommittee's commitment to learning about the benefits of soil health practices and the efforts that farmers are making to blaze a trail in conservation. I am Dr. Shafali Mehta, the Executive Director of the Soil Health Partnership, a program of the National Corn Growers Association, or NCGA. I've had the experience to work with and travel around the country and the world working with many producers and can personally attest to the value that farmers put on land stewardship and the impact that soil health has on long-term agricultural productivity. The Soil Health Partnership, or SHP as it is known, was begun in 2014 when the Nature Conservancy, Monsanto, and the Environmental Defense Fund came together to develop a farm-led network that allowed us to measure the impacts of soil health practices on working farms. True to their vision of being farm-led and making sure the decision stayed there, SHP partnered with the National Corn Growers Association, which represents 40,000 dues-paying corn farmers nationwide and more than 300,000 growers who pay into the corn checkoff system who that then goes into their states. SHP continues to be administered as a flagship sustainability program for NCGA. So SHP partners with over 220 farmers who are fairly diverse across 15 states. We were recently joined by the National Wheat Foundation and currently work with over 120 partner organizations, including commodity associations, governments, nonprofits, and private companies. Farmers work with our team of experienced field managers to measure the impact of practice changes on their lands. As a result, we have created a unique in-depth data set to help support farmers' decisions and to understand the impact on soil, yield, input use, and the farmer's bottom line. We are also assessing and understanding the near-term risks that can come with the adoption and also the long-term reduction in risk that comes from these practices and the increase in resiliency on land. The farmers who work with us are exceptional land managers on their journey to improve the economic and environmental sustainability of their operations. Many are looking to reduce or eliminate tillage, try cover cropping, or experiment with advanced nutrient management. This year, we began incorporating farmers who are grazing on cover crops with their livestock, manure use, and diverse crop rotations. Our goal is to meet the needs of our farmers and to continue to add more tools to their toolkit to ensure that they have more economic diversification. However, these practices are in no way a silver bullet. They must be understood in concert with the specific geographies where they are adopted and the goals and needs of the individual farm operation. Our data illustrate that these practices can result in very different outcomes, even when implemented on the same farm operation but in different fields. So our work aims to better understand the impact so farmers can use these tools with greater efficacy. We know that managing for soil health has concrete impacts. We are still working, though, to quantify the full benefits and cost. Our initial analyses indicate that SHP farmers have soil health indicators and increases over time. For example, we have seen soil organic matter increase by one-third to one-half percent over three to five years. This may not sound like much of an increase, but soil organic matter takes quite a bit of time to change and evolve. So this is a key indicator of soil health and linked to several benefits, including reduced runoff and soil erosion, increased resiliency to extreme weather events, and increased carbon sequestration, which in turn helps mitigate climate change. RSHP farmers highlight other benefits as well, such as making it easier to work in wet fields earlier in the spring. Those with reduced tillage have experienced cost savings such as decreased machinery use, fuel use, labor needs, and more efficient use of farmers' time. So soil health is about the long game. It gives the farmers the ability to reduce risks and increase resiliency. And our data indicates farmers invest in these practices because they believe in these long-term benefits as well. So although there are clear benefits for managing soil, we must not lose sight of the fact that transitioning to these practices is costly and risky for farmers. It takes time to adopt and identify the combination of practices that will work on the land and in the context of the production system. And keep in mind, the benefits of soil health do take many years to come. The results we had in our data set were anomalous and actually have raised a lot of questions about what you can do, but on the whole, it takes time. 
So collaborations are key to successful outcomes in this arena. I would say no one group can do it alone. And so strong outcome-based collaborations like ours have seen greater awareness and adoption of soil health practices. Um, by supporting farmers making these investments, we increase the overall well-being of farmers and society overall. So thank you for your time and your continued support for soil health and farmers. I look forward to your questions. <laughs>